Oh, you can see this William out here on the brake, <clears throat> just playing around with a, a new prototype. It's uh, called the, the, we're going to name this one the Master Sportsman. It's based on the Sportsman model, which was based on the, the Canadian belt knife. It has an upswept blade, fantastic skinning blade. But I thought I could improve on it a little bit and uh, do a multi-grind since I like multi-grind so much. Got the little curved Scandi into a tooth. And then on this one, it's going into a hollow. I think for a sportsman's knife, a hollow grind is a very versatile grind or a very, I won't say versatile grind because it, it's very specific to meat cutting. That's what it was designed for and it's, it excels at it. Anytime you're doing slicing because it doesn't have that binding deal here, it just slides right on through. But uh, the stipulation with a hollow is that um, it's just a weak blade Rightly so, it is a weak blade uh, when you start talking about bushcrafting and getting the blade in there and twisting on it and, and even splitting, uh, batoning with it with, for kindling and things like that. Um, it's just, it's a very weak blade for that. And it's not, that's not what it's designed to do. Uh, the right tool for the right job, remember that. So, but anyway, I thought, well, what if, again, the audacity of improvement. <laughs> what if we married the hollow grind for the slicing ability the, the butchering of, of game and stuff like that with what I like uh, as far as a curved scandy and a tooth uh, since I like those attributes in a knife. And so uh, this is this is the result. I, I like the handle on the uh, the sportsman. We kind of extended it a little bit. It's a little bit longer. Uh, it has a little bit more curves, contours for control uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, but anyway, uh, this one, I'm really liking it so far. I've been using it for every day for a couple of weeks now, and um, it's um, yeah. I think uh, I think it's uh, we're onto something here. So we're gonna keep uh, keep working on it and see what we come up with and what what comes out of it. But um, anyway, um, kind of, that that kind of leads me into the other thing. Um, whenever I come out with a different steel or a different handle material or a different design or something like that, rest assured that I have used it enough to feel confident with it that I would use it myself. And so that means that, that if I would use it, then I would be comfortable selling it to somebody else and put my brand on it. Because, I mean, this, is, this, is, this brand is very special to me because I have worked very hard for nine years to build that brand up and get the reputation that I have. And I'm not going to jeopardize that. Okay, just just throwing that out there. All right, so let's talk about steels for a moment. Um, if you guys recall, several years ago, I uh, say years ago, several months ago, it, it felt like years ago, but it was just several months ago, when I had to, to go from AEBL on the SK to Nitro V because of availability, the AEBL was being shipped from Germany and it was on back order. We couldn't get it. So now the AEBL is coming in that we back ordered several months back, might be a year by now, um, is just now coming in. And the Nitro V is getting difficult to get. So um, they're saying three to four months for Nitro V and, you know, and so on and so forth. So I'm saying all that to say this. Uh, you guys have, have, if you haven't seen us vetting the AEBL, we did pretty much the same thing. Uh, we just didn't video it with the Nitro V. But rest assured that the reason we came out with the Nitro V is because we were comfortable with it, or I was. And so the uh, you're going to see a lot of knives coming out now in AEBL. Um, and the reason for that is because we can get AEBL. We can't get Nitro V, all right? So, I love AEBL. Um, I've, I've got lots of videos on AEBL. If you don't know about AEBL, it's a, a, um, a true stainless steel, and we tested the stainless properties on it very thoroughly. Uh, the late, great Dan uh, Lutz did a, a lot of testing on AEBL, and he was, uh, anyways, you can go back and look at the, um, the videos on, uh, on my playlist on AEBL and see what all he did. Uh, he was one of the testers on that. So anyway, um, the um, and the Nitro V is the same. I mean, 
um, it's a, it's a regarded as a stainless steel. Now, whether it's as good of stainless steel or as much stainless as the, the AEBL, no, it, it will discolor a little bit. It, so it's not as, as stainless as the um, AEBL is, but it's, it's or as stain proof as the AEBL is. The uh, Nitro V is, is a stainless, okay? So, I mean, you just, there's, there's pros and cons to every steel on the market, okay? But again, the Nitro V was close enough to AEBL that we was, uh, that I was comfortable with uh, going ahead and going that. Okay, I keep circling back to all this. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is I like both. And I keep getting the question, which do you prefer? I, I, I prefer a WC knife, <laughs> okay? <laughs> if I come out no one with a design that I like, I prefer it. If I come out with a Nitro V and a design, I prefer it. I like the steels, okay? If I didn't like them, I wouldn't come out with them. Uh, but, um, so basically when you see a knife come out in AEBL, it's because that was the steel that was available when that knife was produced. Okay. If you see a knife come out in Nitro V, that was the steel that was available when it was produced. Okay. Because getting materials folks is a pain right now. Uh, if you uh, haven't heard about the ships being stacked up at the docks, the supply chain is getting very difficult. And so, uh, anyway, we're going to keep going, uh, and, and we'll make them out of whatever we can, still we can get. It, but rest assured, if it's not a steel that I've used before, it will be thoroughly vetted before it goes uh, out the, of this shop as a sole product, okay? You have my word on that and you have the WC brand on that, okay? All right, thank you guys so much for your support, your confidence. Um, you guys, like I said before, many, 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 many times, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be no us at WC, okay? Uh, sound like Papa's coming from the lake. People keep asking about Daddy. There he comes, you're gonna see him pull up here. He finally put his boat back in the water. He'd be 90 years old this month. So there he goes. Be 90. Put his boat back in the water for the first time uh, in about three months uh, this week. So he's feeling better. He, he has some lung issues for a while. He's got COPD real bad. He probably heard him grunting as he, he's got a habit of that. But um, anyway, if I got him some mullein tea and uh, man, that, that perked him right up. That mullein tea, I, uh, if you got a lung issue, try you some of that mullein tea. It did wonders for him. But anyway, he's back fishing again. And uh, so until the next one, you guys get in the backyard with a little stick. Be sure and take a child with you. Get the opportunity. And don't forget those painted band-aids and lots of knives. We'll catch you again very, very soon.